Hello there. My name is Alicia, AKA Edmiston Creations, and I am a wife, mom, social worker, and athlete living in the mountains of South Central New Mexico. And this is a place where I like to share a bit about the things that I've been making, what I've been up to with my family, as well as I like to pepper in some mental health awareness and um, social work practices that you can choose if you would like to apply to your own life and your own making practice. So if any of that sounds like something of interest to you, this is the space for you. Um, so first off, Happy New Year. I finally have had a moment to be able to record an episode. Um, I really, you know, the new year was quiet for me and my family. I really did slow down and I eased into the new year. Um, the first week of the year, my daughter was out of school. And so I took the time off of work as well to really be with her and my son. And I gave myself grace to, you know, no pressure to crank out content, <laughs> um, you know, push my, I didn't push myself to make a whole bunch of things. I mean, I, I absolutely did knit and sew, but I just kind of did that as I felt, you know, I had the energy. So some days I had a whole lot of energy <laughs> and I did make a lot um, or I spent a lot of time making, but then there were some days where I didn't make much or I didn't spend much time making at all, just a little. So I really just honored what I needed in the moment and it was a fantastic start to the new year. But then the next week, um, I my daughter, we got back to real life. My daughter started school and so we were kind of back in our routine. I started working again and it was great because I didn't feel like we were just thrown back into our routine. We had a snow day, so Ella was out of school the first day she was supposed to go back. So we spent the day sledding, um, or part of the day. And I had um, some work appointments, not a slammed full day of work appointments, which was great. Um, but because of, you know, weather changes we, and with routine, we kind of had this gradual progression of getting back to our full on routine. And so just that first week back to work, it was kind of slow, slow, fast, 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 you know, just more busy with more work to do and momming and uh, being part of my family. So I then it was my husband's birthday that weekend as well and we traveled for the weekend up to Albuquerque for a work uh, dinner for him a holiday work dinner and so we celebrated his birthday that weekend as well as attended a work holiday party and we did some fun things together as a family in Albuquerque so um, yeah here we are I finally have a chance to record <laughs> So um, before I get too far into the episode, I want, I do want to mention what I'm wearing because I forgot to do that last episode. I just started and dove in. So I am wearing my Alder Cardigan by Trillium Fiber. I tested this for her. Um, her name's Maggie uh, and she works at Black Mountain Yarn Shop. I made this out of some of my favorite yarn of all time. Jill Draper makes stuff, um, Mohonk Sport. And this main color is Shell and this is Dark Roast, uh, the contrast color. And then I used Idle Weidel, Idle Weidel, Idle Wild. <laughs> um, I used Idle Wild Clay toggles for my button closures and I absolutely love I just, I love the look of the toggles. Um, so the cardigan is very cute, closed or open. Um, but I've talked about this on the, 
podcast before, <laughs> so I won't spend too much time talking about it, but um, it's a great, great make, very warm, super easy to throw on and wear. So that's what I'm wearing right now. I wore this, um, I grabbed this yesterday to go hiking with my family to wear over the top of uh, one of my hoodies. And I, one thing I really appreciate about Maggie's designs is there's plenty of room in the sleeves. So if you did want to wear this or, you know, layer it over a long sleeved item, you can totally do that. And it doesn't feel too constricting or tight. Um, and so, you know, this was a great extra layer whenever I was um, hiking with my family yesterday. Um, and then I had taken it off whenever we got back home um, this morning. I just, I saw it laying on my sew sewing table and I was like, that is what I'm going to wear today because it's cozy. <laughs> so, um, and then this is just a cut up race t-shirt um, from the 4th of July firecracker run. Um, I, I love wearing this shirt because every time I put it on, my daughter's like, Hey mom, that's the, that's the race that you, uh, pushed us in the stroller in. Um, so yeah, I did this 5k and I pushed, uh, the double stroller. I had both of my kids. My husband was, uh, I think he either won or was second in the 5k. So I had both of the kids, um, pushing them in the double stroller. So that was quite an experience, especially on the hills. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're pushing like close to uh you know like around I mean well over 50 pounds together at this point so you know close to uh maybe 80 pounds together uh so anyway you know pushing them in the stroller was <laughs> was definitely uh, a challenge for 5k but it was a lot of fun and um, so every time I wear this shirt, my daughter points it out and says, hey, yeah, mom, I remember that run we did and you pushed us in the stroller. That's the one. And I'm like, yeah, that is the one. Good job. <laughs> so it's just a sweet memory to have with her. Um, and then I'm wearing my R night pants um, or one pair of them. These are um, I love these great pockets for yarn. If you want to walk around with a skein of yarn in your pocket, these are your jam. Um, I made these out of fleece from U Fibers, and I love them. So I'm just going with super cozy around the house kind of style today. That's where we're at. <laughs> I have a lot to do today, um, just kind of last minute things to do. Um, I am gonna be traveling to North Carolina in another day or so um, for Black Mountain Yarn Shop's 14th anniversary weekend. Um, I'm really excited. So if you are coming to that anniversary event, please comment um, or you know get in touch with me. I have my contact information in the description box and let me know you're gonna be there. I would love to say hi or connect in some way um, for the weekend. So I'm super excited to be attending. Um, you know, I know that I have shared some about, you know, you probably have noticed I you I I shop with Black Mountain quite a bit, or I talk about Black Mountain Yarn Shop a lot. And um, so I thought, because it's their anniversary weekend and I'm attending that event, that today would be a really good uh, day for me to share with you my story and my connection with Black Mountain Yarn Shop. Um, and this actually goes way back to 2012, yeah, 2012, um, when my dad had heart surgery. Um, I was a second year MSW student at Appalachian State, and my dad had some heart issues. He had had a stent placed, and then the stent didn't work, and then we ended up in this weird scenario where he was hospitalized for a full week before he needed to have heart surgery because his platelet levels were too low. Um, he had been on blood thinners after having a stent to make sure he didn't have any blood clots. Well, in order to have heart surgery, they needed his blood to clot for it to be safe. So um, 
he was in the hospital for a week waiting for his platelets to come up high enough in order to do the surgery. And so I was, um, all of a sudden I went from living in Lenore to living in Asheville, uh, at Mission Hospital for a week. And, um, I, it was the first time I had ever taken incompletes and classes. It was a very strange place for me to be. Um, and I was very anxious. So I, I couldn't read books. That was kind of my jam in my, in my master's program. I read to chill out and I couldn't focus or stay, you know, I couldn't concentrate to read books. And so I taught myself to knit. And the only thing I could knit was a scarf. And I actually, I have that, I've shared this before because I've shared the story of my dad's heart surgery before um, and my first knitting project. Um, this is it. Um, it's just a garter stitch shawl. I did not have a pattern. I cast it on using the knitting card from Michael's. <laughs> This is Noro yarn. Um, and so I knit this scarf. I stitched away while my dad had heart surgery. And that was what, um, you know, that was what gave me solace. And I remember, you know, so my mom and my, um, my brother were, you know, and I were in Asheville. My parents live down the mountain in the foothills. And so I had needed to go back to my parents' house for like a night and check on the animals and things. We had, my parents are fortunate. They have a very strong community of friends. And so there were people going over and checking on the animals daily anyway, but um, there were some things I needed to tend to at the house. So on my drive home, because I had been knitting the scarf, uh, on my drive home to check on things at the house, I stopped by, I stopped in Black Mountain for whatever reason, I just thought like, well, I'm going to stop in Black Mountain and shop a little bit. And I think I'm going to stop at the yarn shop and I'll get some more yarn for a, another scarf because that was all I could do. <laughs> and so... I stopped into the yarn shop. This is December of 2012. It's cold. And um, they were in their previous location. Um, you know, they've moved to a new location since. And this was when Donna owned the shop. And so I went in. It was just a very quaint and cozy little shop. I walked around. I had no idea what I was looking at. I mean, I picked out Nor Noro yarn from this yarn shop in Morganton that was across the street from a uh, track that I would do uh, track workouts running at. Uh, so I just picked out that yarn because I liked the colors, um, earth tones, shocker. So um, I had no idea what I was looking at when I went into the store. I just was you know, aimlessly looking around. And of course I was drawn to this earthy yarn. Um, oh my God, I don't remember the brand, but it, you know, it was this gorgeous earthy gold yarn. And I, I just, I fell in love with it. And the people at the shop were so kind. They said, well, Hey, what do you want to make? And I'm like a scarf. And, um, I, you know, I, so they helped me pick out how much I would need because I had no idea. Um, and I remember checking out, um, the person that checked me out offered to wind the yarn for me. And I had no idea that was a thing. I was just like, yeah, sure. That would be great. And they even gave me a free pattern for a scarf and a hat that, you know, the person was like, you know, I bet you'll have enough yarn left over to make a hat too. And I was like, oh, okay. So here's a pattern. I'm going to slip this in your bag for you. And I just was thinking like, this person has no, I have no idea how to make a hat. I didn't know how to knit in the round. I'm like, I'm lucky I can knit a garter stitch scarf. Are you crazy? Like a hat? That sounds way out of my league. But that act of kindness was so appreciated because I was leaving the hospital 
and you know en route to to just check on things around the house and then go back to the hospital and i just forever am grateful for how kind they were whenever i went in and i had no idea what i was doing <laughs> Um, and so ever since I have had a very strong affinity for the Black Mountain Yarn Shop and just how, what a, what a loving community, um, is a part of that shop. And, um, I, since, you know, I, I didn't really knit for several years. Um, I didn't start knitting again until my son was a few months old. And so, you know, I'm coming up on my three year anniversary this coming May of like officially knowing how to knit and read patterns and hold the needles properly, all that jazz. Um, so I'm coming up on that this May. So whenever we did go back and visit family, um, this was uh, still during COVID, we drove with the kids to visit family. I still have family in the area. My brother and his wife live there in Black Mountain. And so we went into the shop and just, again, that same kind, very supportive, you know, I went in, I had three sweaters I wanted to buy for, and they were so helpful. Um, it was fantastic. And so I just, since I've been a lifelong customer. Um, and now um, my friend Danny owns the shop and um, you know, they've really been doing great things there in, um, you know, bringing in fabric there now too, and some roving if you're a spinner. So um, yeah, I'm just super excited to like, it's a coming home for me uh, to be able to I mean, literally come home where I grew up and then spend time with my family um, or my extended family now, but my original family, <laughs> the OG family, uh, you know, my parents and my brother. Uh, but then also I get this fun benefit of hanging out with a bunch of fiber friends. Um, so, and it's also my dad's, uh, I believe, 65th birthday that um, we will be celebrating while I am there because uh, he turned 65 on the 24th. So it's just a lot to be grateful and thankful for. Um, so yeah, I mean, so that's why Black Mountain Yarn Shop is kind of my local yarn shop here in New Mexico. Um, and so I would love to hear, you know, what is your story or your connection with your local yarn shop? Or are you like me where you live remotely and your local yarn shop may be somewhere that's some, you know, a different location than you and um, you just have a special connection with that place. I would love to hear your story um, if you would care to share in the comments. So yeah, lots to be thankful for and to celebrate here in the new year. Um, so today, for today's episode, I have a slew of finished objects to share with you. Um, so basically it's going to be just a bit of show and tell, and, um, so we'll see what we get through. So the first thing that I have to share with you is my Ochre Moss sweater. Um, this is by Andrea Mowry. I casted this sweater on on my anniversary, December 14th. And um, it's made out of Jill Draper Kingston DK from Black Mountain Yarn Shop. I finished this just after Christmas, um, before the new year. And I love it. The fit is perfect. What really drew me to this design was the collar. I really love the folded over collar and how it's raised and kind of like a mock turtleneck. Um, that's my favorite element. But I also, I love Jill Draper yarn and I had just made the Highline Henley out of Kingston DK. So I was anxious to use it again. And um, this was a perfect project for it. So um I believe I used the recommended needles in the pattern. I did not make any modifications. This was it. Um, I'm trying to think. I did do a tubular cast on for the hem. I don't always do that, but uh, Jill Draper Kingston looks so nice in the tubular 
cast on and bind off, I did take the time to do it for this sweater. So, um, yeah, I love it. So that's that. Object number one. <laughs> and then the next thing I made, this was my second sewing project of the year. Um, I made up another pair of knit chanterelle pants as my first. Um, but I got on a major sewing kick towards the like the weekend of the first weekend of the year. So um, this is the estuary skirt by Sew Liberated. I made this out of cotton linen twill, lived in cotton twill, not linen. <laughs> it's lived in cotton twill by Blackbird uh, or yeah, Blackbird Fabrics. And I, you know, I got this fabric from, from their Black Friday sale. Um, I had wanted to make another, I, I've made an estuary skirt before with cotton linen merchant and mills from Farmer's Daughter Fibers. And I loved it so much. I loved the fit. I love these little, you know, patch pockets in the front. I love the buttons. I mean, it's just such a professional looking garment once you, you finish it. Um, I knew after I made that one, I wanted to make like kind of a winter version. I wanted a winter color with the hunter green. I mean, you really could wear this year round, but I mean, you know, I, wa I, I wanted to do a darker color as well as a heavier fabric. I just think the estuary skirt is so pretty with a nice bottom weight fabric. And that's exactly what this lived in cotton twill is. It's a nice heavy cotton fabric. Um, I mean, I don't know if there's a way for you to tell it. It's got nice structure to it, um, obviously. And so I used my grandmother's buttons, um, for this one. So I, the top button, I used this cool, like sun brass thing. <laughs> and then the rest, um, I used, um, this like nice tan, but these are from my grandmother's button stash and so it's nice it's got a nice meaning to it um and I like bringing things like that into my me maids um you know whenever I wear them so I wore this estuary skirt with my ochre moss sweater like I had this vision of this outfit like early December like omg the ochre moss paired with the hunter green estuary skirt with my suh socks would be fantastic. Like I wanted to realize that outfit and that was what I did. So here's my first me made outfit of the year. You can see <laughs> I've got my suh socks on and the estuary skirt with my ochre moss, but um, you can check this out on Instagram. I'm sorry for the glare. I'm trying to do the best that I can um, there, but yeah, that's how I styled it. Here's another uh, picture where you can see um, together the skirt and the sweater. So there you go. I'm pretty low tech, so this helps. <laughs> so anyway, the next thing that I made, my son's upstairs watching the whole cartoon he's obsessed so you may hear him talking to the tv um anyway the next thing i sewed was the yanta overalls by helen's closet i have had this pattern for a while now and i finally my friend um, Jen, <laughs> she inspired me to make these overalls. Um, she talked about having different pairs of overalls and things like that and was like, oh my God, I've been wanting to make a pair of overalls and it just finally gave me the nudge to just do it. So this fabric is from Oster Santa Fe. I bought it um, at Mother's Day last year. So I uh, got around to making them and I'm so happy with how they came out. This is one of the cutest, comfortablest, most polished 
things I have ever sewn. Um, I also used Idlewild clay um, ceramic buttons, these teal ones on here. Um, so I just love the way they came out. They've got pockets in the front and um, pockets in the back and you have the option to do an invisible zipper in the side if you need for fit. Um, I did not need that because I didn't make any adjustments to the pattern at all. Um, I just made a straight size. So, and they fit great. So no complaints. I definitely want to make another pair. Um, I'm thinking a corduroy pair and also a denim pair in the future. Um, I have no timeline on that, but they're just in my queue, in my head. So I paired, um, I paired my Yanta overalls with my Sprite sweater. Um, and this is also by Andrea Mowry. I finished this last spring. Um, I made mine out of Ritual Dyes Sprite in um, Quartzite. And I think that this is Bitterroot, the yellow. I'm, I, I'm blanking on the name for that one, but I love this sweater, it's super cute. Um, the fit is fantastic. Um, and I love the yarn. The yarn is so comfortable. Um, I believe it's a Merino Cordell blend. Um, no itch at all. Um, and But you have like the nice like bounciness of the Cordell in there. So it's a really unique base. Um, and I was going to show you. This was how I styled it. Um, this is together. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, if you want to, you can obviously look at my Instagram feed that, and see better. <laughs> but um, then the next vision of my, you know, outfits that I had after these two for the new year was I wanted to sew something special for my husband's work holiday party because it was also his birthday. So, you know, we've been together for 10 years married for nine, but I still, you know, get butterflies looking at him and, um, you know, our love's just grown over the time that we've been together. And so I still, you know, really enjoy dressing up and impressing him. Um, and then, uh, so I had this vision of an outfit wearing a blue Stasia dress and I wanted to do a short shorter version so i i did modify the length of the skirt um this one so this is the stasia dress i did a short sleeve version this is by so liberated um this is in hudson tinsel jersey from u fibers um but i i wanted the skirt to hit me at the knee so what i did was i traced the short skirt uh, off, uh, pattern off, and then I lengthened it by three inches, and that's what gave me the length to hit right around my knee. So that's what I wanted. I wanted it to be a comfortable length where it didn't feel too short on me, but it was still short. And then I have been wanting to make a lichen duster for several months now, and I finally did it. And here it is. Um, this is what I wore. I wore the lichen duster with my Stasia dress. And so it was a short skirt and a long jacket. And those of you familiar with the cake song from back in the day, when my husband saw me dressed up, he started singing that song that he wanted a girl with a short skirt and a long jacket. So I made a reel on Instagram using the cake song because that's what he sang when he saw me. Um, it was a really sweet moment. Um, and I definitely appreciated that he seemed impressed. So that was exactly what I wanted. <laughs> um, but yeah, so here's my lichen duster. I am so pleased with how this make came out. Um, so just holding it up, I did use a Sarah Hearts label. It says made in New Mexico. These were um, 
a gift from a friend of mine and uh, much appreciated. So very special because I can wear, you know, wear this and have my label and think of my friend. Um, but also I can think of home here in New Mexico. So I love it. Um, this was definitely by far the most complex thing I have sewn. And I was quite proud of myself that I pulled it off. Um, I did do flat filled seams. Let's see. I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up with the dark fabric, but I did, I did do flat filled seams, um, in the back skirt. Um, this is a size six with no modifications. Um, it is, this fabric is linen twill from U Fibers. So, um, yeah, I, I knew what I wanted for my, the outfit was I wanted two shades of blue and then I wanted to wear my red heels because those are the shoes that I wore on our wedding day. And I wanted to wear my inclinations cowl with um, the outfit. So and my inclinations cowl has a lot of red and yellow and green. So it really, you know, the red really popped off the blue background. That was exactly what I wanted. Um, I will say with sewing the lichen duster, so Liberated has some YouTube sew along um, videos um, on their channel for free that are super duper helpful. So definitely if you have a couple of garments sewn under your belt, you could definitely tackle this. Um, you have the extra helping hand with their YouTube videos. Um, the other thing I will say is when you're ordering fabric, do not skimp on your yardage because I think I ordered just a little less than the recommended fabric from the pattern, or I might have ordered exactly what they recommended. And when I went to cut out my uh, my duster, I did not have enough fabric left to cut and make a belt with mine. And I am going to make a belt at some point, you know, out of this fabric to wear. For now, I'm just wearing it open and I have a lot of cool Southwestern leather belts with big turquoise belt buckles. So I, I plan on just using the belts that I have right now um, to wear with this. But that is definitely a tip there is to definitely order what the pattern recommends or maybe even a half a yard more just to be on the safe side to make sure you have enough when cutting out. I followed the pattern layout and everything, you know, to cut out my pattern. So I don't know why I ended up short the way I did because like I said, I might have ordered just a little, a smidge less. Um, thinking with a size six that I would be okay with a smidge less, uh, less fabric. No, the answer is no. You need all the fabric for this one. <laughs> better, I mean, and I'm kind of one of those people that's like, it's better to have a little more and to be absolutely sure that I have enough than to like eke it out. So, yeah. So there's that. Um, and I love this. I'm going to wear this in my travels to North Carolina. I'm super excited to wear it on the plane. Um, it's, it's such a great, it's such a great layer. And now I'm actually really, you know, I sewed that and, um, so Liberated has come out with, I think the Sylvan jacket. Um, and I'm super excited to sew one of those eventually. Um, I have, I'm not sure exactly when I will get to it because, um, kind of, Right now, my sewing plans are on hold until I get back from my trip. Um, so it won't be until I'm back in, you know, late January when I'm sewing again. Um, but my next sewing project on deck is a hinterland mashup. Um, I don't want to say more than that because I just want it, you know, I want to share as I'm making it. Um, but it is going to be to wear with a test knit I am doing for Andrea Mowry um, that will be releasing in February sometime. So you will see that 
Hinterland mashup as well as Andrea's um, next design that's going to be released in February. So I'm excited to share that with you, but I can't really say any more than that. And I don't want to reveal, <laughs> you know, I don't want to reveal any more than that um, to respect the uh, agreement of the test. So, um, but I'm super excited to share with you when it comes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like that's the only testing commitment that I have right now. Um, so we'll see what unfolds there. That doesn't mean that I don't have like a bajillion things in my head that I want to knit because I totally do. Um, and one thing I have one work in progress that I want to share with you. And that is my inclinations shawl. I don't know if I've shared this before with you or not, but I am, I, I picked this up. This was a work in progress already, but Chelsea Knits Sews Throws on Instagram. She is hosting a shawl crawl for 2024 where, and I thought this was such a fantastic idea where you knit um, one shawl per quarter. And that way, at the end of the year, you've made four shawls. And so I just was like, this is perfect. It, it aligns exactly with, you know, my intentions and uh, for making for the year and, you know, having some limits for myself so I don't overwhelm myself. But also, um, I've been wanting to make more shawls. <laughs> so I was like, yay. So if you're interested in joining, the hashtag is shawl crawl. 2024 and I'll have that in the description box but yeah this is it so far and basically the only rule I have had with this was I have used all of my partial skeins of dream state that I had in stash I've used them all up into this so now I don't have any random partial skeins sitting around and um right now I'm in shades of earth this was the first full skein of yarn that I caked up to add to the shawl. So Shades of Earth. And this is my last partial skein of Wool Lolo Dream State. So I've got these two going right now. And then when this one runs out, I have a skein of Black Mountain Yarn Shop's new colorway that's coming out this week at the uh, anniversary event. So I'm really excited, but I can't share that with you either, <laughs> but next episode I'll be able to, um, or you'll see on Instagram if you follow me there. So um, they have a beautiful new colorway coming out, so check them out on Instagram and stay tuned so you can grab your own if you're interested. Um, so I should, I do think that once I finish up this skein and then I, you know, finish this one and add in the new color, um, I'm going to kind of just see what my si the size of my shawl looks like, but I imagine I'm not going to really have to add any more, uh, yarn after that. I should be pretty close to done. Um, I would think, but I love, there was zero planning of colors here. This was called Alicia grabbed a color, picked it up and added it. I mean, no, I mean, I think this just speaks to how beautiful spin cycle yarns work together. Uh, almost no matter what. So, uh, yeah, no forethought whatsoever. This is just, it is what it is. And I love it. So yay. <laughs> um, so that's it. I, that's all I have to share with you today. Um, as we wrap up here, uh, next episode, I am going to share some crochet and knitting patterns um, or items that I really like to wear working out. So basically like crochet knit activewear. Um, these are items that are go-to that I wear uh, whenever it's cold outside. And uh, so that's gonna be part of my next episode. So be looking for that. Um, I won't record until, you know, for probably a couple of weeks since I'm going to be out of town and then I will be um, busy with work um, and supporting clients when I return. But I, you know, that is my plan for my next episode is to share some um, knit crochet active wear <laughs> that, you know, if you have um, 
any need for bundling up and going outside, whether it's hiking or whether it's lifting, you know, that it should be something that works for you. Uh, so that'll be in my next episode. And I did, as I'm coming to a close here, I did want to check in with you about your intentions for 2024. And if you did decide to write intentions, you know, how are you remembering them daily? Like, are you, you know, are they written out in a visible place? Are they posted where you can see them? Um, you know, I think one thing that we do whenever we do like New Year's resolutions or we write goals for ourselves is, we'll write goals and then we'll, you know, just close the book and tuck them away. And, you know, we forget about them because they're not in front of our face. So if you're not actively revisiting your intentions on a weekly basis, that's something I encourage you to do. And if it makes it easier, instead of like, I keep my whole life like written in this bullet journal, I swear. But, um, you know, if you don't have a journal to reference and look back at, you know, even that, you know, you have to actively put energy towards looking back and referencing your intentions in a journal. I really encourage you to, you know, one of James Clear's um, recommendations for building a habit is to make it easy. And something you can do to make it easy for yourself in referencing or remembering your intentions is to post them somewhere that it, it's visible. Um, you know, so around the house, is it you know, I mean, like on your refrigerator, on a whiteboard that you have posted somewhere, on a bulletin board in your house that you can, you know, tack it up, or in, um, on a sticky note and keep it in your bathroom um, on the mirror where you can see it. Just make it easy. Um, and so just remember to keep your intentions in your mind and central because if you write them and then you don't reference them and you forget them, then you're no longer, you know, leading with your intentions. Um, and that's a very common trap to fall into. I've totally been guilty of that myself. So um, just saying this to remind myself to do it too. <laughs> and um, I also do a word of the year. Um, last year, my, uh, so instead of like intentions for my life, for the year, I tend to just do a pick a word, like a guiding word for the year now um, that encompasses like what I want my general focus to be. Um, and because you can remember one word, it's just so, again, make it easy. It's so easy to remember. So my word for 2023 was acceptance. And for a lot of reasons, that was exactly on point. That was the word that I needed for 2023. Um, and I think it's still a word that I will care, you know, clearly I will carry that word with me every day, the rest of my life. Um, this year, my guiding word is awareness. And I think awareness kept coming to mind, um, especially as I've been reading a new earth by Eckhart Tolle, you know, awareness is the antidote to unconsciousness. And so, you know, just really building my awareness of being present, being um, mindful, being conscious, um, you know, being aware of the ego when it shows up, just awareness seems to fit, <laughs> you know, for a lot of places uh, for me in my life. So do you do a word of the year? And if so, I would love to hear yours if you would like like to share in the comments that's something I would love to hear um, so with that that's all I have to share today I hope that you know wherever you are that you are safe and at peace um, or working towards those things and I hope that you know today you have find some time for making for yourself or for a loved one. And until next time, you know, please like, subscribe or and or comment on this video. It really does help out my channel so much. Uh, and I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me a bit today. Um, until next time, happy making. <laughs>